We installed on the Linux all the necessary software, the compilers and the utilities, and we also installed CSHL and configured it. Next, let's install Visual Studio Code. Open your browser, search for Visual Studio Code. Code.visualstudio.com, click on the link, download, and select the version for Ubuntu, the .deb file. Save file, OK. It's done, close the browser. The file should be in the download folder, and we can install it with sudo apt install on the file. You can open it by typing in code, enter, and we're greeted with the welcome screen of Visual Studio Code. At the top, we find the menu options. On the left, the activity bar with Explorer for all the files, Search, Source Control for Git, and Debugger, and via the extensions, we can install extensions for support for C, C++, and Fortran. There's an icon for the accounts, and an icon for Manage, and via Manage, we can access the settings and the command palette. Let's first check that terminal, new terminal opens the terminal. It does and opens the best shell, and we would like to use the CSH shell. So go to Manage, Settings, and search for Terminal Integrated Shell Linux. We can see the option over here, Terminal Integrated Shell Linux. It's by default Bash. Edit in Settings. User bin CSH. Save. Terminal, new terminal, and now we have the CSH shell. There's an issue with the font, so let's go back to settings, search for terminal, and then font. And at the top we have terminal integrated font family, set it to SF mono powerline. And that fixes the font. So the terminal now works, it uses the CSH shell. Let's go to the explorer. Visual Studio Code is an editor, not an IDE, so there's, there's no such thing as create project. But we can do open folder and create an empty folder, and we're going to call that project and open that one. Okay. So in the project, we can manually do new file or new folder. But let's first install support for C and C. Let's go to extensions. We have no extension installed. What we need is the C, C++ IntelliSense install. Let's search for C++ makefile and install that one, makefile project, install. And let's run for, let's look for code runner. Code runner, install. So they're all three installed. Let's go back to our project. These extensions have now added commands to the command palette. So we can go to command palette and we see that we now see C++ make in it. Click on it and we're going to do a C++ project. So what this extension of the makefile does, it creates a makefile for us and it creates a directory source and object. So the makefile we can edit. It's already set by default to G++ if you created the C++ project. For C, it would be the GCC compiler. It set the options. So we can make this a little bit more helpful by adding debugger support, switching off the optimization, and adding more options for warnings. The app name is going to be my app. Let's leave it at that. And extensions of a C++ project is always going to be .cpp. It expects the source files to be in the directory source. And the compilation, the object files, is going to be stored in objects. So now what we can do is go to source and create a new main.cpp file. And let's write a very small hello world program.
So this is the working C++ program. We can um, edit via the Visual Studio Code. And we could open the terminal. Type make to compile dot slash my app to run and make clean to clean the project. So the make file extension is very nice. It helps you out because it automatically works for many, many source files. So this workflow is nice. That means that you edit the files in Visual Studio Code and you do all the commands in the terminal to compile and run. But it will also be nice if you can do that in the graphical user interface. And for that, we installed the Code Runner extension. So the Code Runner extension installed the play button on the right, which you see over here. But also the right click now is an option Run Code. Code Runner associates with a certain file type and command, and we can edit that in the settings. Also, what we would like to do is that the code runner outputs everything to the terminal. So there's several options which we need to set. Let's go to settings, search for code runner. And the option that we need to set is that we would like it to run in the terminal, save all files before run, save files before run. And the fourth option would be ignore selection so the ignore selection means that if you don't set that and you have part of your source file selected and you accidentally run code it will generate temporary files that interfere with the build system so ignore selection avoids that next we see that we have the executor map we can edit that and now we can control what is actually run when we press here on the play button we see in this file all the options that we set before, like the CSH shell, the font that we set, and the four options. And for each file type, code runner associates a command. So we can control what that command should be. So for example, we can add a make file type, and what we would like to do is cd into the directory and run make. So let's see if this works. Right click now on make file and run code. And you see that it does exactly the commands which we wrote over here. CD into the directory, make the make file, compile and it runs the my app. So that means we can uh, edit the files, but it means you have to right click on the make file before you can do that. It would be convenient if you just can leave this selected and Click on the play. So we can go back to the JSON file and the command which we would like to do for the make file is something that we could also do for all the other ones. So also for C files, for CPP files and for the Fortran files. So let's do that. Let's also do Objective-C and we can find at the bottom the files and extensions for Fortran. So let's change these two. Let's go back to the project. So what we now can do is one, once we're editing the file, we can simply click on the play button and it runs the commands for us. Let's add a few variables. Save, play, and it compiles the code for us. Next step, let's test whether the debugger works. So let's set a breakpoint over here. Here is the debugger. Click on it. The first time we have to configure it, run and debug. Let's choose the GDB LDB. The fault configuration. And the only thing that we need to set is the program. So that's called my app. Save. Run the debugger. Now it should stop at the breakpoint and we can inspect the variables over here. 
So everything is now set up for C and C++. In the next video, we're going to do this for Fortran.